Fine. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, today we will uh, go on talking about the methods uh, that are uh, implemented in uh, CP2K to solve the uh, <coughs> DFT uh, equations. Um, and uh, this uh, other method uh, is uh, the GAPW. And after uh, introducing uh, this, um, this formalism, I will uh, show you a couple of examples of electronic properties uh, calculations uh, that uh, uh, also exploit the uh, GAPW features. Um, in between, I will also add something about uh, electronic structure of metals and how you can um, do this uh, as well with uh, CP2K. So, it should be possible. Yeah. Uh, just to <coughs> repeat uh, the um, uh, basics uh, about the uh, formalism in uh, CP2K. So, as in uh, other electronic structure code, we have to <coughs> expand the wave functions in some basis sets. And uh, then uh, the uh, problem is to, so the, that we have to solve is to find the uh, coefficients uh, for these uh, wave functions. So that uh, we call here now C, uh, while these uh, phi are the basis set uh, functions. Then the density will be described uh, as uh, this uh, linear combination of products of basis set. Um, functions uh, where the sum over the coefficients, uh, including uh, the occupation number, if it's needed, uh, will be the uh, density matrix. So in, uh, in general, what is done uh, in uh, electronic structure codes is to work with uh, uh, matrices. Uh, and the important thing is uh, to know how in which basis sets these matrices uh, are defined. So now we have the uh, density matrix that we will be call al always P in these slides. Uh, and uh, the Konecham uh, total energy is given by the uh, usual series of terms where we have the kinetic energy, the external potential, the heart three part exchange and correlation, uh, and the nucleus-nucleus uh, nucleus interaction. And again, uh, we will uh, uh, use a formalism uh, based on the matrix representation, where we'll have to solve this type of equations, where here the uh, K is the um, uh, Konecham matrix, these are the orbital coefficients, uh, and then uh, we, will, uh, can, uh, we can write this in terms of uh, uh, this uh, order. So the, uh, I have these different terms. So again, the kinetic energy, the external uh, pseudo potential, typically uh, part, uh, hard free exchange correlation. And where S is here the overlap matrix, uh, and uh, epsilon here are the orbital energies. So then this is uh, the generalized uh, Konecham equations uh, that we have uh, to solve the eigenvalue equations. Okay, so that is uh, the usual uh, um, set of uh, equations. And then uh, the codes uh, differ, differ among uh, themselves by the choice of the basis set. And you have, for condensed matter, you find uh, many codes that uh, use uh, plane waves. These are uh, the obvious choice when you have periodic boundary conditions. There is, in principle, a complete uh, basis uh, set if you, you increase. Uh, um, so you can uh, systematically uh, improve the basis set just increasing the, the uh, largest uh, wave vector. And uh, um, and then, so th and that is uh, uh, then uh, often used for uh, uh, solid states. Uh, other codes use localized uh, basis set, so typically atomic atom center uh, basis set, uh, and uh, most in most of the cases they are Gaussian type orbitals. Uh, what you have seen yesterday is this uh, mixed. Um, method where you have both plane waves and uh, Gaussian type orbitals. In fact, so actually what you have is that the expansion is made in Gaussian type orbitals and for a certain part of the calculation, in particular for the Poisson equations, you prefer to uh, describe the, the density, to, to expand the density in plane waves in reciprocal space such that it is uh, faster uh, to calculate that, uh, uh, that term. <coughs> 
and then this is uh, so the uh, GPW method. So where you have this auxiliary basis set, but you describe exactly the same density with both uh, basis sets. Hmm? So with uh, the uh, Gaussian uh, type orbitals and the plane waves. And now I come to the GAPW method, where you, uh, in uh, on <coughs> instead you have uh, a separation of contributions. So you still have both the Gaussian type orbitals and the plane waves, but uh, you, all, you don't uh, describe all the terms with both uh, um, um, representations. So some parts that are called hard, where the density fluctuates um, uh, a lot, then uh, it is uh, hard to represent with uh, plane waves, then this part uh, will be represented only in, uh, uh, with Gaussian type orbitals. And uh, so that means that uh, on uh, the plane wave representation we will keep uh, only the soft, uh, so the smooth part of the density. So this uh, can lead to um, uh, um, double uh, uh, representation of uh, contribution that uh, we have to take care about such that we don't have double counting of, uh, of densities. The uh, Gaussian uh, and plane waves, so the GPW method, is uh, uh, in general, uh, so it is used uh, with uh, pseudopotentials, so in this way, you avoid uh, the very hard part uh, of uh, the density uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, describe the entire density uh, in also in, uh, in plane waves. Uh, so this, uh, this sequence of uh, parts of uh, um <coughs> algorithms you have seen yesterday, so you have then to put the density on the regular grids, so then you transform with a, a fast Fourier transform into uh, the uh, reciprocal space, uh, there you can calculate the uh, Coulomb potential, then you transform back and uh, and you can make the integration on the regular grids. What uh, is uh, important in uh, using the Gaussian type orbitals is that the, the matrices uh, increasing the size of the system become sparse mm -hmm. and then you can uh, exploit some linear scaling algorithms, so making screening uh, 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 to have a more efficient calculation of the Koenigsham matrix and that uh, becomes uh, uh, linear in uh, in, with the size of the system, the, the computational effort. So that is uh, the advantages of uh, the GPW. Uh, and this is uh, the uh, GPW functional, so where we distinguish so parts that are calculated analytically using the uh, integrals uh, uh, with uh, the uh, Gaussian type orbitals here, so that is typically the kinetic energy and the pseudopotential part, and parts that instead are integrated uh, on uh, real space grids that are regular grids, uh, and that is uh, the Hartree and exchange correlation uh, terms. Uh, this year you have seen yesterday, so in this case for GPW <coughs> you will have to uh, give uh, a cutoff that it is uh, uh, large enough for the type of basis sets that you have, so this will depend on how hard your basis functions are. Um, and uh, so from uh, the choice of the cutoff, the accuracy uh, also uh, depends, I think I lost it. Okay. <laughs> Mouse, yeah, here. And, uh, and here is uh, where you give the uh, basis sets and the pseudo potential. So you have to give pseudo potentials in order to be able to use this GPW method. Okay, so that is uh, the input you have seen yesterday in, uh, in the exercises. And uh, you see here a list of uh, um, files that stay in uh, the repository CP2K data. And uh, here you find uh, many uh, libraries for basis sets, so you have a lar already a large choice. Obviously you can optimize your own basis functions. Uh, there are tools already in CP2K uh, that you can use. You can uh, optimize uh, using the atomic code, so for a specific atom uh, and reproducing the all electron 
no, they're producing the, uh, the, the results of a very large uh, basis set, so a numerical basis set, or you can use uh, molecular optimized uh, uh, optimization methods such that you can reproduce specific features or structural features or energies of a molecule uh, by optimizing a, a basis uh, uh, set or a basis set of more elements. But here you have already a, a quite a large size. Here in red are basis sets, and the other files are for pseudopotentials. And there are also other files in, in data. OK, so the basis sets that you use with GPW are of the, can be of this form. So these are, are uh, for example, in this file here, so GTH basis sets. So these are optimized for uh, pseudopotentials. You can, you can find basis sets of different accuracy, so in increasing in size. And you know maybe how already maybe how this, uh, uh, what, what these numbers mean. But I go quickly. So for I take this uh, double theta. So here you have uh, two sets. So this first set of uh, four um, functions and uh, this uh, second set of only one. Uh, exponents more than function because every set uh, here it says it is this set it is for function from s to p so with the l quantum number 0 to 1 and it contains four uh, exponents so that are the one two three four so these four lines and there are two contractions for s and two contraction for p and here they are the contraction coefficient this uh, first function s second function s uh, first function p and second function p hmm? And, uh, and then you see the, this uh, the, uh, triple theta has instead three and three contractions, hmm? and actually uh, five uh, exponents. The molecular orbital, uh, the, mo so the molecular optimized basis sets have instead uh, this uh, aspect, uh, so they are really strongly contracted. You see that here there are no. Uh, columns uh, with uh, all zeros. So the, the idea is that you have all a single set of uh, exponents. Uh, these are a very accurate basis set. Um, depending on the size uh, of the exponent, you have uh, uh, functions that are um, more or less diffuse. So here the, the, the la uh, smallest exponent tells you how diffuse this uh, basis set is. So uh, then also how expensive. <laughs> and um, yeah, you see these are for uh, pseudo-potential use, uh, and in fact this is oxygen basis set for uh, six um, valence electrons. Eh? So that the 1s electron are not uh, explicitly considered. The largest exponent is what you have to consider to determine uh, which is uh, the best uh, um, cutoff you want to use uh, to de describe also <coughs> appropriately the uh, hardest function, so the hardest term of the density. When you go to all electrons, you immediately recognize, this is again oxygen, that the largest exponent uh, are <laughs> quite uh, some order of magnitude larger. Hmm? Um, then if you want to describe this uh, on a regular grid, uh, yeah, you are uh, quite hopeless to have some uh, uh, accurate description uh, with uh, a feasible number of uh, grid points. And um, <coughs> that is, uh, well, uh, shown here. So here we have uh, three different Gaussian functions uh, with uh, three uh, different exponents, 0 0.1, 1 and 10. And uh, you see that uh, the smoothness uh, of the function changes rapidly. Uh, you have to consider that we want to uh, collocate on grids products of function of, uh, of this basis function. So it's actually function with uh, the exponent that is the sum of uh, the exponents of the two functions. And uh, then you see that uh, for uh, representing these three functions on the same number of points, uh, you have to reduce the spacing among the points. Mm? So here you have the smoothest function in, in uh, purple, and uh, it is uh, 
um, accurately described uh, on a quite uh, coarse grid. So, with, uh, so here is the center of the, the Gaussian at this uh, dot, the white dot. I, I changed the mode of <laughs> Sorry. How can I go back? That's, yeah. Um, uh, and um, here you have the uh, blue function, and then you see that uh, to describe it on the same number of points, you have reduced the spacing. And the green functions, if you describe this green function on this grid, you will have probably just one point. Hmm? And that is obviously not a good representation uh, for uh, the contribution to the density coming from this function. So then uh, if we wanted to do a whole electron uh, calculation or if we wanted to have a basis set or even for pseudo potential with uh, larger um, uh, exponents, uh, we have to find uh, a different uh, solution. The solution that has been uh, proposed already uh, since uh, many years is uh, to uh, partition the density in hard and soft contributions and there are several methods that propose uh, uh, this uh, um, feature. Um, the augmented plane wave methods that are uh, implemented in uh, different codes um, define uh, different regions for uh, the hard contributions and for uh, the uh, soft contributions. So they are the hard regions, I would say, uh, with uh, borders. And uh, then I have to connect the calculations uh, done in the interstitial soft region and the calculation done in the um, hard uh, atomic regions at the border, um, providing so uh, densities, uh, wave functions that are uh, continuous uh, at, uh, at the border of this region. So they have to, to take care of the connection between uh, these uh, two uh, worlds. Um, what we use instead is based uh, on uh, the PAW method of Blöcke, where we don't have hard regions, so hard defined borders, but we define both contribution, uh, the uh, soft contribution and the hard contribution over the entire space. And then we have to uh, take care of uh, double counting and uh, have to uh, make sure that uh, these are cancelled such that we have, uh, in the end, uh, the exact density. So in this way, we can use uh, uh, also the core electrons explicitly. So we uh, optimize the core electrons explicitly. They are not frozen. Uh, we can uh, implement uh, uh, smaller cutoffs. Uh, also, you can use GAPW with pseudo potential and reduce uh, the cutoff because uh, only the, the smooth part of the density will go on the regular grids. And uh, in, uh, in addition to that, so we have to pay obviously for something, we have to introduce uh, atomic centered grids such that we can uh, compute these uh, terms that are the hard part of the density uh, on uh, grids that are uh, made for uh, the specific density along, uh, around the atom, so they are atom centered and they are uh, sufficiently dense. <coughs> Okay, so how we do that? Uh, this is again uh, our uh, total density. We want to partition it in uh, a soft density that now I will uh, um, represent with the tilde and in a set of uh, hard atomic densities. As I said, these two densities are represented uh, in the entire space. So if I leave it like this, I will have uh, uh, some uh, uh, overlap of the two uh, and uh, uh, double counting. So what uh, is uh, done is to uh, introduce a third term of uh, local atomic density, but soft. And, uh, Having uh, this term, we have to satisfy the following conditions so that uh, in the interstitial region, so here the one uh, uh, the, so illustrated with green, uh, the soft density, the one that we will put on the, on the, on the regular grids, uh, is equal to the exact density. While in the same region, the soft and the hard the local density are equal and so they cancel each other. Um, <laughs> For the atomic regions instead, we have that the hard local density is equal to the exact density, while the soft uh, um, extended and the soft local density are equal and they cancel each other. So having uh, this uh, 
uh, sat, then we will have the uh, exact uh, final solution. And uh, uh, we have now just to um, find a, a, a way to describe appropriately this local density. So this will be expanded in uh, functions that are again local functions, so they are, they are atomic Gaussians, but uh, this will be centered only on the atom A where this uh, density belongs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then we have to find functions here that describe all the contributions that uh, um, are uh, um, for this density at atom A, so coming from all the uh, other atoms as well. But there are contributions that stay only in the region of atom A. And for the soft density instead, we, the, the, to construct it is very, so it's much easier because we just have to uh, use uh, the basis set functions that are soft enough. Mm? So we remove all the hard basis functions from uh, the uh, expansion of this density. A bit more in detail how these uh, uh, local density are um, then constructed, so I said we use uh, basis sets, uh, basis set function that are centered uh, on uh, the atom A, but we need to introduce the contributions uh, here from the functions mu and nu that are centered also on neighboring atoms, because the contribution of this function enter the region here, the circle of atom A. So to do that, we have so this this uh, new function will be anyway uh, a contraction of uh, primitive Gaussian function centered on atom A, but we have different contraction coefficients, hmm? and we have to find these contraction coefficients. Um, to do that, uh, we uh, need to project uh, the basis function mu that can be centered on another atom, so a neighboring atom here in the region of atom A. So we make these projections, so we have to construct these projectors. So these are, are also uh, Gaussian function, but are very uh, compact and localized in the region of atom A. And uh, we perform these projections in order to find these coefficients. And, uh, and then we can expand uh, our density in the, this new function. In fact, as you see, we will use anyway only primitive functions that we already have. This primitive function will be just the primitive function centered on atom A, but with new, uh, a new density matrix. Hmm? A density matrix that it is for atom A and uh, uh, specifically for this primitive function. So, so that where here you have these new contraction coefficients. The same is done for the local uh, soft densities, just removing again from the primitive uh, functions here those that have uh, a too hard exponent. And that's, that's it. Okay, then uh, we have these three different contributions to the density. For uh, local terms in our functional, uh, we can uh, uh, use uh, uh, a partitioning also of uh, uh, the uh, potentials and uh, we'll, we'll find that, for example, for the exchange and correlation, uh, we uh, keep only the um, direct term while the cross term will cancel. So in the end, when we have to calculate uh, the exchange correlation functional or the exchange correlation contributions, we will have one term that is calculated on the regular grids, uh, where we have the soft density. And then we ha will have terms that are calculated only locally. So this will be calculated on these atomic grids. And this will be one center term. So you see that there is a sum over A and that uh, will be easily calculated there. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the cross terms uh, here uh, do not contribute. Different story for the um, electrostatic part. So the Coulomb uh, operator is not local. And then we have to uh, add some additional uh, care and uh, what is done is to uh, construct uh, uh, what we call uh, the uh, compensation charge. This uh, compensation charge is constructed uh, as a sum of local charges. These are expanded uh, also in uh, a Gaussian 
um, functions where uh, here this uh, q are the uh, multiple coefficients and uh, they are uh, obtained by um, having the multiple expansion of this density here, this local density. That it is the sum of the local hard density minus the soft hard density plus the uh, atomic density. So, what, uh, so this, this is the contribution coming from the nucleus. Hmm, to the, because also the nucleus has a charge and then you have to consider the electrostatic uh, contribution that comes from this. So, then if we, co you, you fi we find this uh, multiple expansion for this density um, and we construct uh, this uh, uh, compensation charge that has the same multiple expansion, that means that this compensation charge has the same electrostatic properties as the sum of these uh, three contributions. This said, we will have now uh, the uh, Coulomb potential uh, <coughs> divided in these three terms. One term is the uh, uh, potential coming from the soft density and this compensation charge. One term is the hard density and the atomic, the nucleus uh, density or the nucleus charge and uh, this one is uh, the soft local density and uh, again the compensation charge but uh, uh, divided in the atomic term. We can uh, also see that these two terms cancel in, uh, in the uh, interstitial region, so we don't have to calculate these two terms in the interstitial region. While uh, these two terms cancel in uh, the atomic region, that means that we don't need to calculate this term in the atomic region. So what remains is the following, so we will have uh, for the Hartree part, uh, one term that is calculated only on the regular grid, here, and these terms that are calculated only on the atomic grids. That's it. And uh, for uh, this part, uh, we will have uh, only, um, again, um, a single term, so uh, single center uh, integrals. Um, yeah, because of uh, another approximation, but uh, that, that anyway becomes easy to uh, compute. Um, yeah, that just was just to say that we have for these uh, local terms, we have expansions in spherical Gaussians uh, and then we calculate this integral using this expansion in spherical Gaussian, that means that for our um, Integ numerical integral on these uh, grids, we use spherical grids that uh, include a radial part and uh, an angular part. So the radial part is done with this uh, gauss chebyshev quadrature, while the angular part is done with the Lebedev quadrature. This uh, I say because uh, you in the input find uh, some parameters that concern these grids, just to know what uh, this uh, number means. Okay, and that this is uh, how the GAPW input uh, uh, looks like or can look like because you always know in, in, in CP2K you have a lot of defaults so you can often rely on and uh, so that uh, is not uh, always necessary to introduce in your input uh, all these parameters. But just to quickly go through, so most parameters for the accuracy of GAPW are in, in this uh, QS uh, section or subsection. Uh, first of all, you have to give uh, the method, so you have to specify GAPW because the uh, default is GPW. Um, you, uh, this is uh, the uh, choice of the quadrature for the local grids. This parameter is maybe the most important. Uh, it, this defines uh, what to consider hard and what to consider soft. So it is uh, uh, a way to say, so this, uh, uh, from this exponent uh, to higher exponent is considered hard and I will not put this exponent on the regular grids. So this uh, 10 to the minus four is the default. Um, yeah, this is the, also the default is fine, this is the um, co uh, exponent uh, for the compensation charge. You remember the compensation charge goes uh, to the regular grids. 
Hmm? It is only one Gaussian, uh, so only one exponent, but then you have uh, the, um, uh, the multiple expansion. Um, this exponent is uh, okay for uh, a standard uh, cutoff uh, on the regular grid uh, of uh, 300. Hmm? Um, Rydberg. Uh, yeah, so that uh, is okay. I think in the, the default is fine. But if you want to play with that, you have to go to this uh, alpha zero h. You see, in the kinds, you have uh, also the possibility to use pseudopotential. So GAPW works uh, uh, with pseudopotential. You can have uh, a calculation with some atoms with pseudopotential and some atom with all electron. Obviously, you have to uh, consider to change uh, properly the basis set. Hmm? So this is a basis set for pseudopotential. This is a typical basis set for all electrons. Here you see the number of points for the two local grids are given and you can give them uh, uh, based on the kind. So every kind can have a different number of points. Okay. Good. So that uh, is uh, the accuracy. That's a test that have been done now many years ago. And the comparison was done with Gaussian uh, uh, null tree. And um, yeah, y here it is uh, in, uh, for different small uh, molecules. Uh, and the accuracy in uh, micro tree using exactly the same basis set uh, because with, uh, we, we, can, we can use exactly the same uh, basis sets. And uh, you see that increasing the basis set, our accuracy improves. Uh, and this is because this partitioning of the density is uh, more accurate if we have uh, a better local basis sets. Um, that is uh, other um, tests. Uh, no, that, that, that's all for GAPW, uh, so the method, uh, you have questions? No? So then uh, um, I move to oh sorry, the next part that is about the um, uh, SEF, so the self-consistent field op optimization. You yesterday already heard about the uh, favor favorite method in CP2K, that it is the orbital transformation uh, method, so the OT method. Uh, this is a kind of method. Oops, um, this is a kind of uh, direct optimization method. So you use a sort of the gradient of the energy with respect to the coefficients of the uh, orbitals. And, um, and it is very efficient. Um, the standard methods uh, that you find also in other codes are based instead on the diagonalization of the Konechamp equations. So you find the uh, solutions that are the Konechamp orbitals and the Konechamp energies. Um, these uh, are also uh, implemented in CP2K. And, um, other methods that you also heard uh, about yesterday are linear scaling methods that uh, work directly with uh, the density uh, matrix. So why we, uh, I uh, talk about uh, this, even if it is not uh, the um, most efficient method, is because uh, whenever you want to have, uh, um, during your SEF, uh, access to the occupations of the orbitals uh, or the energies, uh, uh, you cannot use the or, um, orbital transformation method, say OT method. With OT, you can have this information a posteriori, so you arrive to your solution of the uh, wave function optimization, and a posteriori you calculate, uh, you make uh, one <coughs> iterative diagonalization, and you get uh, the uh, orbital energy and the eigen, uh, eigenvectors. But if you need them along the SEF, uh, you are not allowed to use uh, the OT method. And then you have uh, to uh, use the traditional diagonalization method. 
Uh, the uh, equations is this uh, generalized uh, eigenvalue problem and uh, when uh, you use uh, the standard uh, scala pack routine you have to transform first uh, into a standard eigenvalue problem and for this reason in your computation you will notice that there is uh, one part that might take uh, quite some resources that it is, it is the uh, Cholesky decomposition. So what uh, is done there, the um, overlap matrix is decomposed in the two triangular, so the U transpose and U matrix, uh, and uh, such that you can define the C prime uh, coefficients as U times C, where the C are the coefficients uh, in, uh, in these uh, original equations. And also the um, Konechan matrix can be transformed in a, a Konechan prime matrix that is uh, uh, this uh, um, product of matrices. Now, if you have this as a matrix that has to be diagonalized, you see this is a standard eigenvalue problem. Once you have the solution of the standard eigenvalue problem, you can transform the C back using uh, the U minus 1 and, uh, and get the uh, coefficients you're looking for. Okay, so this is uh, what is done. <coughs> The diagonalization for uh, uh, improving the convergence of uh, the uh, SEF, uh, mixing procedure need to be used, and uh, uh, in al as alternative, uh, the DIIS method can also be uh, implemented here where the error, um, so the residual, is defined uh, as this uh, um, difference of products of matrices. Again, here you have Konecham, density matrix and overlap matrix. The diagonalization uh, is about scaling, uh, so OT uh, scales, uh, what is N? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, so it's a product of the number of uh, um, wave function, uh, basis function and number of electrons. Instead, here we have a scaling that in the number of basis function goes like uh, m to the cube. So that is uh, the uh, difficulty in uh, using diagonalization methods. For the mixing, it is very important because otherwise you have instabilities. Um, so it might take uh, very long if you have too strong fluctuations in the density or in the density matrix. Uh, therefore, what is done is to, to mix uh, the new density uh, so matrix, uh, this uh, P out, with uh, the uh, P in, so the input density matrix. Uh, this is done uh, in the um, most uh, standard way, just uh, define finding a coefficient here, uh, alpha, for the mixing. Uh, this alpha is, uh, in general, um, quite uh, small. So that means that you take, uh, in large part, the input density and only a small contribution of the output density. Mm. Um, yeah. The uh, mixing is done uh, in general until a given convergence has been reached. Afterwards, the DIIS uh, uh, is uh, uh, started. This is uh, the convergence that is uh, in uh, the threshold after which uh, the DIIS method starts. So when you have standard diagonalization, I'm talking only about traditional diagonalization um, and uh, this the, all these parameters uh, have no effect uh, in the, uh, if you use OT. Um, when you use diagonalization, you can introduce uh, also um, not occupied uh, uh, orbitals. Uh, what you cannot do uh, with orbital transformation, because orbital transformation makes them uh, transform, so it rotates the orbital and mix them, and you are not allowed to mix orbitals with different occupations. Uh, with the diagonalization method, uh, this is not a problem because uh, the orbitals uh, have their own occupation and they are not mixed. Um, yeah, from this uh, section of the input, uh, yeah, maybe also um, the uh, convergence criterion, uh, criterion here is uh, different uh, um, again between OT and um, and diagonalization in OT is the maximum gradient of the energy with respect to wave function. Here is the maximum difference uh, between uh, uh, elements, uh, uh, the input density and the output density matrix. Hmm? So 
Therefore, same accuracy is obtained with uh, different EPS SCF. This is uh, okay. Uh, this is uh, the said the uh, part of the input for OT. Another thing that I have to mention: the outer SCF that you can use uh, with OT, uh, because uh, the precondition is, is reinitialized, has no effect with diagonalization because there is no preconditioning in diagonalization. So if you use diagonalization, this subsection uh, can be removed. Um, another uh, note is about the preconditioner for GAPW and all electron calculations, uh, even though this is uh, the uh, most expensive uh, preconditioner because it requires a dia in fact, it, this requires a diagonalization because it requires the inversion of uh, the Hamiltonian uh, uh, minus the overlap matrix. Uh, this is uh, say compulsory if you use uh, all electron calculations uh, because uh, uh, otherwise the differences uh, in energy between the uh, valence levels and the core levels are too large and a simple preconditioner is not good enough for, uh, uh, for helping in the, in the op optimization. Okay, so that is uh, for OT. Where we are, we need uh, for sure the diagonalization method is uh, when we use uh, metals. So when we want to optimize the electronic structure of metals. And uh, the reason is that uh, we need to introduce additional <coughs> states. So we cannot uh, have just the number of states equal the number of electrons. And um, that's because uh, the bands, uh, here is a, a, a band structure of uh, rhodium, the bands uh, are not uh, fully occupied around the Fermi energy. So you have a Fermi energy that crosses bands, that means that you have uh, discontinuity of, the occupa of occupation, changing the, the K point, and uh, this uh, uh, introduces instability in, uh, in the convergence. So, in general, when you have uh, a standard insulator, you have an occupation uh, uh, number that is determined by a step function. So, if you have, uh, if your energy, orbital energy is smaller than the Fermi energy, then it is occupied, fully occupied, uh, otherwise it's completely empty. This uh, situation is, uh, uh, is not optimal in terms of the optimization, numerical optimization of uh, the electronic structure problem. So what we have to do is to introduce uh, um, partial occupation, so the uh, smearing of the occupations. You see immediately that if we have to deal with energies of orbitals and occupation numbers, we need the uh, Konecham energy and the Konecham eigenvectors. That means we need the, dia the diagonalization. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and in addition, we need also more uh, states, so going beyond the uh, occupied uh, um, uh, subsystem and, um, and therefore we need uh, the diagonalization. Um, so we introduce then an occupation function that uh, is uh, smooth, so this is uh, approximate the step function but it is smooth and uh, we use uh, in CP2K the Fermi Dirac function, any function that approximate the, the step function uh, is uh, equally valid. Uh, to uh, determine how smooth this function is, there is one parameter that it is uh, in this case called the temperature. In other function has the same, in other uh, formulation has the same um, uh, use but uh, is not uh, specifically defined as a temperature. And, um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, we use this occupation, uh, um, smooth occupation during the optimization. Since uh, we are now occupying partially some uh, states, uh, we need uh, to uh, define also uh, entropy, that uh, is uh, the probability of a state to be occupied. And uh, the, fu the mm, function that we minimize is not anymore the uh, potential energy as we know it before, but it's the Mermin functional because uh, it includes this uh, uh, additional term. Um, 
yeah, this is uh, one uh, thing that we need uh, for the metals. Uh, the additional part, the additional uh, care we have to take is about the mixing. The direct mixing of the density matrix is not uh, um, properly working when you have uh, this type of situation. So you probably have noticed also in other uh, calculation that when you increase the system size, then uh, you have uh, 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 more difficulties in the convergence. Um, this is uh, the reason is that uh, increasing the system size, you have fluctuations of the density at the long distance, so and uh, um, uh, long uh, um, uh, radial uh, so space, uh, uh, real space. This. Uh, um, introduce uh, fluctuations uh, in uh, uh, the uh, reciprocal space at short uh, g vectors mm, because uh, uh, the um, inverse of the uh, uh, reciprocal, the, the real space is a uh, reciprocal space. So what you have in the, at the long distance in the real space, you have at the short uh, g vector in uh, the uh, reciprocal space. So these fluctuations uh, make uh, that uh, may have uh, as very um, tiny effect on the energy, instead uh, have uh, a strong impact in the change in the density in the reciprocal space. And so you have from one uh, CF step to the next uh, strong fluctuation that may make uh, the convergence uh, numerically not stable and it's very hard uh, to, uh, to find a solution. Therefore, the mixing uh, in, in these uh, situations uh, have to be done in reciprocal space uh, where you precondition uh, the, um, uh, the change in the density according to the uh, coefficient uh, in, uh, in G space. So this is uh, uh, also the, uh, what is needed for uh, um, metals in general, doesn't matter on the size of the system, because uh, uh, having uh, this uh, um, change in the occupation of the bands uh, by uh, changing uh, the uh, decay point, uh, you have uh, again uh, fluctuations in the density that uh, correspond to small changes uh, in the energies. This uh, is called also charge slashing and makes uh, again uh, the numerical minimization difficult. Uh, therefore, the um, damping of this oscillation at small g vectors, uh, so in, uh, in the representation in reciprocal space, uh, is needed. And uh, this uh, uh, is uh, the way of doing the mixing. So the mixing is done in reciprocal space, changing the, coef the coefficient of the mixing depending on the g vector. Then you have uh, multiple choice of uh, mixing procedure. Uh, the one that uh, I like most uh, is uh, the Bryden uh, mixing, uh, where you have uh, the new input density is a linear combination of uh, uh, residuals uh, and uh, difference in density. So these are different in density of previous steps, uh, and these are different in residuals of previous step. You see, you have always the preconditioning with the g vectors, uh, and uh, these are representation in, in g space of the density. And then you have also the um, coefficient here that is obtained uh, by minimizing the, uh, the sum of the residuals. Okay, so these are the um, the ingredients uh, for uh, the metals, uh, so here you have uh, the uh, flow of uh, um, uh, of operations. So first you update the connection matrix, uh, then you diagonalize uh, uh, to obtain the vectors and the energies. You find the occupation number and uh, the Fermi energy. Uh, you uh, calculate the new density, new density matrix, uh, check for convergence, uh, then you, if not uh, converged, you make the, the mixing uh, and uh, with, uh, so you have uh, 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 taken some uh, um, information about the history of the optimization, so you mix uh, using previous densities and then you go back uh, to the construction of the, of the density, of the Konechan matrix. Um, in this part, the most expensive part is the diagonalization. And uh, you can find that uh, it may even take something like uh, between 70 and 80 percent of the entire um, uh, computation time. 
So that is, um, yeah, not nice. Uh, it's mainly um, due to the libraries uh, that we use, so it, there's not too much space for optimizing. The uh, typical libraries are, that we use are the Scalapac libraries. Uh, there are uh, two this, uh, that are um, uh, used. Uh, they use different algorithms. One is a divide and conquer algorithm, the other one is this uh, MRRR. Um, and then you see that uh, using these uh, two libraries uh, plus uh, the part of the Cholesky, here you have uh, the scaling, uh, increasing the number of processors uh, for uh, 600 uh, copper atoms. And, uh, and then you see that uh, here you have no scaling anymore. Hmm? So the Cholesky not at all. So going from 128 to 266 uh, uh, remains the uh, same. Uh, but also for the diagonalization you have really poor uh, uh, improvement. Um, yeah, the <coughs> apparently one of the worst scaling part is this um, is in this step where one goes from the matrix that has to be diagonalized to a tridiagonal matrix. Then this tri tridiagonal is uh, diagonalized, and then the results are transformed back uh, to the uh, eigenvectors that uh, um, of, of the original matrix. There is. Uh, um, possibility to uh, improve uh, and is uh, Im using instead the ELPA library um, that you have to um, compile yourself or uh, using the tool chain and link to the, to the code. The advantage here is that uh, it, the diagonalization is done with additional steps. First, uh, it goes to a band matrix, then from this to the dry diagonal matrix, and then back band matrix and original. Um, this scales a bit better. You cannot imagine order of magnitude of difference, but it is a bit better. And uh, you see it uh, here that um, we have uh, the total time, or let's say that only the diagonalization time with ELPA, and uh, the diagonalization time, these are the red lines uh, uh, with uh, the Scalapac, and then you see that ELPA keeps improving, uh, increasing the number of cores uh, when uh, the two Scalapac already stopped. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that is just on, only for the diagonalization. For the Cholesky, we still rely on the Scalapac matrices, uh, say libraries, sorry. Um, this is a, there is a hope that uh, somebody uh, comes up with a better algorithm. But yeah, so this is uh, the, um, the drawback. And uh, in the end, one can do also large system if one has enough uh, resources. Uh, here you have uh, two examples or uh, decently uh, large system. So these are a slab of rhodium uh, uh, kept on both sides with uh, uh, hexagonal boronitride. Um, the supercell in total contains uh, uh, this one and remember, uh, something like uh, 1,500 atoms. Um, yeah, this is uh, 11,000 electrons, uh, 19,000 uh, basis functions uh, for four layer and 19, uh, yeah, 20,000 electrons for the seven layers left. And uh, you can uh, still do it, uh, so it takes uh, the full optimization, geometry optimization, a uh, couple of weeks, uh, starting from scratch. Um, that is also 200, uh, no, 2000, no, about uh, 300 and 500 atoms in total. And uh, again, uh, this is a ruthenium slab with graphene on top, uh, and uh, you can uh, do it. So you need some resources, but it's, it's doable. More difficult is molecular dynamics. So geometry optimization, I would say that are standard calculations. If you want to do molecular dynamics with this stuff, it's a, it's a bit more complicated. Okay, the SCF um, section for metals, as I said already, so you need the smearing section and the mixing section. Um, yeah, for the systems I just showed, 
Sean, uh, it is very important that you introduce also some uh, uh, dispersion corrections, otherwise you will never get uh, decent results. Um, yeah, you see here, uh, for metals, uh, you have to add uh, not only the smearing, but also these additional uh, orbitals uh, here. So you need to have a set of empty orbitals that can be a, a at least some of them partially occupied uh, and, um, and that uh, improves a lot. The, um, the convergence, this temperature, if you increase the temperature, uh, you help the convergence. Um, you have to be careful, if you increase too much, you arrive to a state that is not uh, the ground state. So you can uh, try to have a quite a large temperature, you arrive to some convergence and then try to reduce the temperature and see if you, you get the same uh, state. What to check for the quality of your calculation uh, is the electronic properties. So band structures, if you have uh, and if you are doing k-point calculations, uh, um, more so easier is to use uh, uh, density of states. Often you have a variable uh, density of states from, uh, uh, from experiment and uh, you can uh, have a look uh, how, uh, how they um, reproduce the, the data. Uh, structural data also, but there's a bit uh, more intense calculation, but you have to, but you can do the lattice constant or the bulk modulus uh, if you have some uh, cohesion energy. The work function if you have um, um, surfaces. In this, um, in this uh, comparison is a, a pseudo potential of 17 electrons for uh, rhodium against a pseudo potential with no, uh, 9 electrons. You see that the occupied part uh, is uh, very well reproduced also with uh, other pseudo potential. Here you have also different uh, basis sets, so the double zeta, single zeta polarized mm -hmm. and a single zeta not polarized. And I would say that the single zeta polarized is still okay. The single zeta not polarized start to be not very accurate uh, for the empty uh, part uh, of the states here. Hmm? Uh, but otherwise, uh, th that is also something that uh, you have to uh, consider for improving your performance. So if you reduce the size of the basis set, uh, since your, uh, the, the matrix that you have to diagonalize uh, decreases uh, uh, in size, then you, you can really speed up. So you can play also with this. Uh, um, features. Okay. Um, questions about metals or uh, SCF, OT against diagonalization? No. So um, maybe then uh, I'll uh, go for a uh, idea of an application. Uh, when you have um, metals and nanostructures, uh, often are uh, one of the things you want to study. And um, here is uh, one uh, system that we studied a lot, so I already showed uh, briefly before. So it's a rhodium slab with uh, uh, isaglal boronitrite. And um, the nice uh, feature of this um, combination is that uh, it produces uh, a patterned structure, so that has been recognized uh, using uh, scanning tunnel microscopy, uh, where they saw really nanometric uh, changes uh, in uh, the density, and they uh, they couldn't really um, figure out uh, what it is, what it was. Uh, at that time, so that was uh, still in uh, 2004, and uh, later with uh, calculations uh, and uh, other experiments it was understood that indeed the um, uh, hexagonal boronitride uh, uh, layer, atomic layer, uh, modulates its height over the substrate uh, due to a change in the interaction depending on where the nitrogen atoms sit uh, on top of the uh, rhodium atom. And since the two lattice constants have a mismatch, it is not possible to sit every uh, nitrogen atom exactly on top of the uh, rhodium atom unless you stretch a lot the uh, hexagonal boronitride mesh 
that it is not uh, uh, advantages in terms of energy. So then you have this modulation. And uh, this is what you see here in uh, the uh, STM. Why I tell you is because <laughs> I want to introduce the possibility to simulate STM images uh, uh, with uh, electronic structure calculations. This is um, the simplest approximation that you can uh, use to uh, simulate uh, STM image. That is the terse of Hamann approximation. So you use just the density, the local density above the surface. Um, and uh, in general, it is uh, quite a good approximation. Uh, if you don't have strong interaction between the tip of the uh, microscope and, uh, and the substrate, uh, the uh, approximation uh, is in general giving the, the a good, uh, rep reproduce very well the, re the experimental results. So here you see the high resolution experimental image where we distinguish these uh, areas, uh, the darker area that we call the pore and this uh, interstitial area that we call the wire. And uh, both the size uh, and the um, corrugation height are quite well reproduced by this STM image that has been simulated on top of uh, this structure that uh, has been obtained by optimization. And then you see here um, the same size of this pore area where the nitrogen atom and the boron atom also stay closer to the substrate and where the wire area instead they stay higher. The image here is giving uh, a corrugation of the density. So the, the method, uh, the STM uh, method is to move uh, the tip uh, around, uh, so to scan the, the sample and to let the tip uh, move up and down uh, such that the current uh, uh, through the, so between uh, your sample and the tip remain constant. So we approximate it uh, saying that the density has to remain constant. So we go up and down and find uh, the surface uh, where the density is constant. And, uh, and that is the way to compute uh, with terse of Hamann approximation uh, the uh, image. Hmm? So you find the density, so the height of the density, the height where the density is constant for a given value that you give at the beginning. The value has to be small because uh, uh, we are talking about uh, density outside the, 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 sa the sample, so where it's already decaying. Uh, you can also look at um, real uh, um, orbitals. Uh, so here you see STM images obtained on the same system but where molecules have been adsorbed changing the bias, uh, meaning that here they are looking at occupied state, states where whether here they are looking at unoccupied states uh, and we can do the same. We can look at occupied state and the unoccupied states uh, using uh, our uh, approximation and, uh, and you see that we reproduce uh, the same feature. So this um, type of lobes uh, here, so with uh, uh, this uh, sort of flower and uh, this uh, more circular object there. So that uh, it's something that uh, we can uh, really do. There is uh, the, the print key STM and then you can obtain these uh, images. You have to be tell work over with uh, some uh, elaboration of the cube files that you obtain to obtain the images, but that's uh, trivial. Another um, maybe point that I want to mention, I already said it's important to consider the uh, dispersion correction. Again, for a similar system, in this case is ruthenium, uh, and this is graphene. We have a similar type of corrugation, and uh, then we have also experimental data about uh, this corrugation, so um, different experimental um, uh, techniques uh, often give different results or are interpreted differently. Um, here, what uh, is uh, given is the height uh, of the, uh, so the minimum height, so where the graphene is uh, the closest uh, to the substrate and the difference in height between uh, top and, uh, and, uh, and down. And uh, here you see the results obtained with different uh, functionals or different dispersion corrections plus functional. And uh, yeah, 
the differences can be really large. So you go from these uh, black dots uh, here, that gives a difference about uh, one uh, angstrom to this uh, blue here, that gives uh, 1.6. Uh, yeah, and um, and this is a lot, and also it's not only that; it's really the the shape uh, of uh, this uh, overlayer that changes. Here it is something that is going very smooth from high to uh, to low, and instead here you have a plateau and then a quite uh, fast uh, increase in the height. So this is really a different description of the interaction, of dispersion interactions. Uh, and uh, these uh, systems are very sensitive because you have a whole range of distances uh, mm, from uh, around one, one mm, two to four. And you have to describe in this range that this is the difficult part. It's a really not, not bond, not covalent bond, but not uh, uh, very long range. So in this dif difficult part, you see they behave completely differently. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> this is uh, um, something that uh, DFT has to deal with. And um, it is not nice uh, to need to do benchmarks of these things, uh, every new system uh, you, you want uh, to explore. Um, in the end, uh, I, um, some I, I would say that some uh, reasonable choice is uh, for this type of system is uh, PBE or similar with uh, um, non-local uh, dispersion correction, so like the RVV10. And uh, they, these things, uh, th this uh, combination uh, I found, uh, for at least for metallic plus adsorbate system, uh, gives reasonable result uh, for many different systems. And we are never on top with experimental results. I must say experimental results uh, are not always uh, extremely reliable, so as, as I said, ex interpretation of the results uh, plays a role and uh, often experimentalists don't want to admit it, but uh, yeah, so that's uh, something to take. Uh. Um, yeah, and we have uh, several options, so you know, uh, CP2K links also LibXC and uh, there you can find a lot of, uh, of functionals. Okay, so that, uh, um, yeah, so me, uh, still on the same system, one thing that we can compare, so we, since we have GAPW, we can compare with XPS, so with uh, X-ray photo emission spectroscopy. Uh, and uh, they there have uh, many, so the experimentalists uh, have uh, many ways to really understand the electronic environment of the atoms they target with uh, the photon energy. And, uh, and now with advanced techniques like uh, X-ray sending waves uh, as, um, methodologies, they can also um, look uh, at uh, the spatial distribution of specific species. So they have uh, um, additional tools uh, to uh, uh, understand the, the, the nanostructures. And uh, we can also calculate this um, distribution of uh, uh, core um, binding, binding energies because we have access with GAPW to the core electron, to the all electron uh, features. And uh, here you see that uh, for this graphene, different carbons at different height have, uh, correspond to different binding energy of the 1s electron. And this is what they see here in the experiment. So they, they see the carbon uh, that like two species, they uh, identify two species of carbon. So I'd say the carbon uh, in the uh, valley, so where they are close to the metal, and the carbon in the hill, where they are um, higher up. And um, yeah, and then we can reproduce the same distribution here. Uh, I split uh, the carbons in more species, but if you sum up the this, uh, this Gaussians here, uh, you get something similar. And uh, so then uh, we have another uh, tool to compare one to one with experiments. Um, yeah, so another uh, system like this was, uh, just skip this. Uh, Wow, okay, so the, the, for the, um, maybe this I add, for the uh, um, 
core binding energy, it is important not to look only at the uh, eigenvalue of the core state, because this is not exactly what they measure. Uh, so they measure the kinetic energy of the electron that is uh, uh, coming out after excitation. And this uh, kinetic energy includes also the relaxation energy of the system after the electron has left. Mm -hmm. So then if you just look at the binding, at the, at the core state energy uh, after a standard ground state, uh, you get uh, a value that is uh, um, lower uh, than what they measure. So the kinetic energy should be lower <laughs> than what they measure. They measure a uh, kinetic energy that is higher because there is this relaxation in addition. And, uh, and then one could consider additional effects like the electron that uh, is uh, emitted uh, then could uh, excite uh, additional processes and then it loses in kinetic energy and then they also measure uh, lower kinetic energies because of these processes. Uh, one could uh, take into consideration also these effects. Um, what uh, I use uh, is typically the transition uh, uh, um, potential method. So I calculate uh, the binding energy of the electron when the core state is occupied only one half. So that means that it includes uh, a bit of the final state and a bit of the initial state simultaneously. And this gives uh, um, let's skip this. Uh, a, a very nice agreement. Um, but, uh, I show you just the experimental result. Uh, the, uh, so here it is. Um, uh, in this case, again, nitrogen and, uh, and boron uh, on rhodium. Uh, these are the, the XPS of nitrogen and boron. And then you see that uh, also here you have boron that uh, have uh, nitrogen that have a different uh, environment. And you see uh, a double peak here. So you see uh, this shoulder and uh, this broader peak. Uh, when uh, the instead the uh, BN flattens, so the all nitrogen have the same environment, then they see only one peak. Uh, so there is a narrowing and only one peak. And it's the same that we observe uh, with uh, the calculations. We have the double peak when the, the HBN is corrugated and uh, the uh, single peak where the uh, HBN is flattened due to functionalization. Uh, so this uh, uh, are results that are really on top uh, of the experiment and uh, this we have obtained uh, with um, the Slater potential method. So considering the occupation one half of the core state. You can play a bit with the occupation having the, uh, all the uh, diagonalized uh, uh, metrics and all the states uh, and uh, having the whole electron you can do this type of uh, simulations. Yeah, so I think that uh, obviously I could go on with the spectroscopy, <laughs> but uh, um, maybe I know you never have questions, <laughs> but I would like to stop and ask, do you have questions? <laughs> or do you have a property that you would like to simulate uh, and uh, I can tell you whether it is possible or not? A system, so a spectroscopic uh, feature. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah? I was wondering, maybe I missed it, but do you have something to deal with dispersion attractions? Like <coughs> Grimme or something? Like yeah, uh, so you missed it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. Actually, I didn't speak uh, too much about the methods. They are implemented. Uh, the D3, the D2, uh, and uh, the uh, non-local dispersion functionals. Um, other methods like the Tachenko method, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is wouldn't, I think it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, the, there is now a D4. Or no, no, <laughs> there is no D4. Uh, but so you have uh, different options. Uh, you need to, to use them. Um, the way to introduce, and I saw that um, in this bit tutorial, um, it is to have this uh, subsection in the exchange and correlation uh, section uh, where you specify which type of uh, dispersion you want. Uh, this uh, is for the D3. 
um, you need to um, give the address of this file. This file is in the data, uh, CP2K data. I don't have an example for the VV10, for, but uh, you find examples in the, in the tests. So anyway, it is inside here. So you see here it is dispersion potential, which type, which type. And then, depending on the type, you have a, another additional subsection where you define something. Um, yeah, but this is, uh, is needed. Other? Let me stop. <laughs>